This video is sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. Street Fighter 6 is coming up and a lot of fans are excited for the sequel. I don't play SF, but the sequel I'm excited for is a potential sequel to the Street Fighter cookbook. Think of the new street food recipes we can possibly have with the new characters. Maybe some classic French crepes for Mimi, or some shumai for Jamie, or some Italian arancini to hit Marisa's carbon protein macros. One of the things I noticed though is that in the leaked roster, Sakura is nowhere to be found. Which is a shame because according to the cookbook story, she's the one who collected all of the recipes and put them together. Hopefully this brief hiatus in street fighting gives her more time to write another cookbook. In the meantime, Let's give Sakura some encouragement by making her favorite foods, onigiri and oyakudan. First we're gonna start with a cover photo recipe, starting with the red bean onigiri. First we gotta make some sushi rice. For each batch of onigiri you're gonna need 3 cups of sushi rice, put it in a bowl and fill it up with cold water, and then you're gonna swirl it around and rinse it to wash the rice, and do that around 2-3 to three times until the water is clear and is no longer cloudy. Put that in your rice cooker and let it cook. Once your rice is cooked, you're ready to season it. In a small bowl, combine together 3 tablespoons of rice vinegar, 2 tablespoons of sugar, and half a teaspoon of salt. Then you're gonna take this vinegar mixture and fold it into the rice while the rice is still hot. Now let's add the other stuff. For the red bean onigiri, the recipe calls for one 16 ounce can of sweetened red beans that are mashed. I found two brands in the supermarket and I couldn't decide which one would be more appropriate so I got them both. Let's open it up and see the difference. You can see in this Korean one that the beans are more formed, while this Japanese one you can see that it's more mushed into a paste. I think for this recipe the more mashed the better so we're gonna go with this brand. Now mix the mashed red beans with the rice. Because I'm making two different types of onigiri, I'm using half the amount that's listed on the cookbook. So what you're seeing here is half of the measurement that I'm listing in the upper left. When the beans and rice are mixed, you're ready to shape it. Make sure that you prepare a small bowl of water to keep your hands moist during the process. Wet your hands and take a handful of the bean and rice mixture and form it into a triangular shape. If you want, you can dip the sides in a bit of furikake to add a slightly savory flavor. And after that, you're done! Super simple, super easy, and these will last in the refrigerator for up to a week if you wrap it in plastic. Now on to the other type, we're going to make the salmon onigiri. In a pan over medium high heat, place around a pound or four fillets of salmon, generously season it with salt and pepper, cook the salmon for about four minutes, and then flip it and cook it for another two minutes. If your salmon has skin, make sure to place the salmon skin side down first and cook the skin until it crisps up. Once your salmon is cooked, break it into little pieces. If your salmon has skin, make sure you remove that before you break it up. Then add two tablespoons of soy sauce and cook the salmon so that it absorbs the sauce for around two minutes. Now take your cooked salmon and you're gonna add in four scallions chopped up and then also the three cups of your sushi rice, mix it all together and then same thing, you're gonna wet your hands, take a handful of the rice and try to form triangle shapes. Don't make the same mistake I did because I was making two different versions of the onigiri. I let my rice cool too much for the second batch. So when the rice gets too cold, it's going to be harder to get it to stick together. I just put mine back in the micro to heat it up just a little bit and carefully, very carefully shaped it. I'm gonna put it in the fridge like this and hopefully it's gonna set in place. But next time I know to work with the rice while it's hot. Now let's make some oyakodon. In a small bowl, mix together half a cup of dashi stock, two tablespoons of soy sauce, one tablespoon of sake, one tablespoon of mirin, and two teaspoons of sugar. Then in a pan over medium high heat, add two teaspoons of canola oil and fry up one and a half medium yellow onions diced up. Cook that until it's soft for about eight minutes. Then add the dashi mixture into the pan and bring it to a boil. Then you'll add about one and a half pounds of boneless skinless chicken thighs diced up and reduce the heat to a simmer. Cook the chicken for about six to eight minutes until just about done and then reduce the heat to low. Dice up a scallion and add it in and season with some salt and pepper and another two teaspoons of sugar. Now you're gonna take four eggs in a medium bowl and scramble them. Once scrambled, add them to the pan, make sure that it's evenly distributed throughout, and cover and cook that until the eggs are set but still a little bit runny. 
Then over some cooked white rice, place the mixture on top, add some additional scallions if you want, and you're ready to enjoy Sakura's personal Oyakudon recipe. Speaking of Sakura, I want to talk about this video sponsor, Tokyo Treat and Sakurako. Tokyo Treat and Sakurako are both monthly subscription snack boxes delivered straight from Japan to your door. Tokyo Treat is full of popular Japanese candy and snacks like ramen, ramune, and Japan exclusive Kit Kat, and Sakurako is a collection of authentic, traditional Japanese snacks from Japan's local artisan snack makers. Both come with a different theme every month to keep things fresh and exciting. This month's theme for Tokyo Treat is Sugoi Summer, full of tasty and limited edition summer themed treats like this Chupa Chup Soda, which is highly nostalgic and tastes just like the lollipop, and you have to try this crunchy yet soft, watermelon seed ramune candy. And for Sakurako, this month's theme is Okinawa Retreat that has snacks with ingredients from the Ogimi villages in Okinawa which have the highest life expectancy in the world. You can try snacks like this Okinawa cinnamon cookie which would pair perfectly with tea or this shikuwasa jelly which is refreshingly sour. So if you want to experience Japanese culture through snacks, then grab yourself some Tokyo Treat for some popular Japanese snacks or Sakurako for traditional Japanese treats. Click the links in the description and you get some free extra snacks or items with your first order. Not only will you be supporting the channel, but more importantly, you'll have a bunch of snacks to try out. Alright, now let's eat. Starting off with the onigiri, I actually really like how these turned out. Looks almost exactly like the ones in the book. Gonna try the red bean onigiri without the furikake first. Pretty nice, it's pretty light and not too sweet. I'm usually used to seeing the red bean as a filling, but I kinda like how it's mixed into the rice makes the recipe super easy to make and you get a more evenly distributed red bean flavor throughout. Now the furikake version. I think I like this one a bit better. At first the red bean and seaweed combo is a bit strange but the mix of sweet and salty grew on me and won me over. Would I make this again? To be honest, probably not because I prefer savory onigiri but I love how simple it was to put together. Speaking of savory onigiri, let's try the salmon. The smell of the salmon and green onions is so good, I had to try real hard not to eat this right away. Although it was a bit of a challenge to put together, I really like the flavor of this. It definitely would have held on better if I didn't let the rice cool too much, but the salmon to rice ratio was perfect and it's savory goodness. I was thinking of using canned tuna or canned salmon for this to make it easier and cheaper, which I think would have worked, but you can definitely tell the difference that fresh salmon makes. This salmon onigiri is super filling and I can see myself making this again, especially now that I know what to avoid. On to the oyakodon. Chicken, egg, rice, this cannot be anything but delicious. And you know what? It's actually better than I expected. The chicken goes perfectly with the egg, but what takes it to a whole nother level is the added sweetness of the sugar. It's an awesome balance of sweet and salty with a rich eggy texture. The book also said that you can add some togarashi for an optional spicy kick, so let's try some. Yup, tasty as well, so if you like a bit of spice, then go for it, but the non-spicy version is just as good. With her onigiri and oyakodon, it's clear that Sakura has great taste and hopefully we'll see more of her martial arts and culinary arts in the years to come. 